Happy Friday, everybody. My name's Mike Jimenez, and this is the Acquire Taste Podcast brought to you from San Antonio, Texas. Joe Garcia is producing today's show. And before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to Locked On Spurs Podcast and follow Jeff Garcia on Twitter at Jeff G Spurs Zone. It's going to be a big show today. Super excited about today's show. Lots to get into. The NBA announced John Morant's suspension today. And a lot of people think it's another slap on the wrist. Chaos broke out in the USA-Mexico soccer match last night in Mexico. We're going to break that down with Katie Goodman, who's a broadcast analyst for UIW Sports, San Antonio FC. Katie Goodman will join us in 15 minutes. Michael Jordan also making news today. He sold his stake in the Charlotte Hornets for $3 billion. Lots to get into today. Thank you so much for following us. Again, we're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. We're on Twitter, and after the show, it's put on Spotify as well. Joe Garcia, producing today's show. Joe, what's going on, my man? How you doing? I'm doing good, man. It's good to be on the show. Good to be here on a Friday. You got a new baby today, man. Here's the thing. I rolled up, and all of a sudden, I saw saw a new set of wheels out there. Yeah, you saw a new set of wheels. It got me a little Cadillac, you know? Tired of getting family vehicles. Every time I get a car, it's for the family. It's for the family. It's very utilitarian, you know, like an SUV. But I'm like, my kids are grown. So I'm like, it's, it's time for me to get me something that I want. You got to name her. You got to name I'm her. I'm assuming it's a female car. You got to name her. I do. And I haven't thought of a name yet. So I'll leave that up to the viewers. If y'all are watching, throw out some names and I'll, I'll pick one that I like best. Yeah. Check us out. You know, yeah. uh, you can follow us at MJ Acquired Taste. That's my Twitter handle. Again, we're going to about 1, one fifteen. And lots of technology out here. So many people have reached out to say that they are impressed with what's going on. You can leave your comments on here. Whether they be coming from Facebook or on YouTube, you can leave your comments on here. Beginning next week, we're going to tinker with the idea of taking phone calls, Yeah, which is pretty cool. (laughs) Yeah, it's going to be either. It's going to be very cool or it's going to be very bad because I'm sure we'll get a troll or one or two in the mix. But either way, it's going to be fun to be able to incorporate the fans as part of the show. So I look forward to to speaking with them and having them talk with you and share their sports, you know, their sports takes. Yeah, and part of the fun is having the guest out here because we yeah. had Anthony Pittman this week. Oh, we yeah. Had Ken's Fives, Casey Vieira. Today we have Katie Goodman. Uh, we had uh, Jeff Garcia from Walked On Spurs. And that's what we want to have. We want to have a guest at least three days out of the week, if not all five days. I have feelers out there right now to try to get some special guests for next week. So we're trying to figure that out. But this has been a fun first week for us. Over 250 people have now subscribed to our YouTube page, which is amazing. And people are reaching out to us on Twitter saying, do we like this content? It is a hybrid between a radio show, a podcast, and a TV show because we're doing this on camera as well. And I got to be honest with you. You know, I was a news reporter for eight years. And I never anchored the news, but I was always a news reporter. I would always be on location, you know, whenever there was a fire a fatal car crash, oh, yeah. you know, at the courthouse, doing something like that. And doing it on the radio has been different because it's different here. When I was doing this at San Antonio Sports Star, I was doing it off my computer camera, right? Yeah. But coming over here with the ring lights all over the place, uh, with the setups, with the actual camera in front of me, it's a little bit intimidating. I have to go back into the old news days <laughs> that I was back at KBB <laughs> when I was a reporter from the years 2000 to 2005. But having a fun time out here. Uh, you've been a gracious host, and the setup here is amazing. Uh, again, why are we here? We're here to fill the gaps, to fill the void of Sports Talk Radio in San Antonio. Because, again, Sports Star, Ticket 760, they don't have local programming from 10 to 2. Right now we're going from 12 to 1, but the 30-day plan, the 4- to 5-week plan is to what? Expand to an hour and a half, maybe expand to two hours. And then maybe fill in the gap of the morning as well from 10 to 12. That'd be pretty cool too. Yeah. And we have a lot of people who have reached out to us who have said that they want to take part in our venture. Uh, I am fielding calls right now from potential sponsors. Nice. Getting some meetings scheduled for next week. This has been so much fun. Uh, But let's get going. Let's talk about the first topic. Again, Katie Goodman will be with us in about 10 minutes or so. But my goodness, I am so pissed off at the NBA right now. You've got to be out of your freaking mind, Adam Silver. The suspension for John Morant finally came down today. The NBA said, you know what? We're going to wait till after the NBA Finals concludes 
before coming down with a suspension for John Morant. And we're going to come down hard on this guy because of what he has done all year long and what his crew, his posse has done all year long as well. The suspension came down today, just 25 games. Yes. 25 games, just barely over a quarter of the season. So let's backtrack here. John Morant originally, a few months ago, was found at a strip club near Denver waving a gun around on Instagram Live, okay? Charges were never char were never pressed on him, uh, was never arrested for it, but still the NBA was like, what is going on here? Because it was beyond that. It was the fact that he was also accused of beating up a teenager, a teenager during a pickup basketball game, and then following that teenager to his house with a gun in his waistband. His crew was also accused of shining a red laser at the Indiana Pacers bus as intimidation. Like, is that a gun? What is that? And all of this stuff kind of comes out, and John Morant is suspended for a short while. It was like no more than a few weeks. Goes to rehab of some sort, bounces back just in time for the playoffs, and then what? You see him in an Instagram Live video again. This time his friend is the one recording this, and John Morant is there with a the gun in his left hand all over again. Again, this is not a anti-Second Amendment type of thing, but this is a guy that is reckless with weapons. He flashes them around. Okay, he's not there to protect himself. He's flashing guns around, not only in moving cars, but also in public, for crying out loud. So the NBA was going to assess a new suspension for him. The Memphis Grizzlies had already suspended him by saying, you can't come to our facilities right now until the NBA decides what it's going to do. And the NBA came out today with just a 25-game suspension. And that is so disappointing. Several teams around the NBA had contacted the commissioner saying that they wanted to have a heavy suspension because with that suspension, it sets a precedent, right? It sets the precedent for future suspensions. And 25 games is absolutely ridiculous. Chris Leha reaches out to us on YouTube saying, quote, Adam Silver has no balls. And I 100% agree with that statement. The correct suspension should have been half the season. It should have been at least 40 games. And for them to come out and say 25, what is this guy going to learn? Now, John Morant's buddy, by the way, is banned from Memphis Grizzlies games for one season, for one year, okay? But what is he going to learn from this? And a lot of people have reached out to me today. By the way, I have a poll going on on Twitter right now. You can check us out at MJ Acquire Taste. And I'm asking the question, is this too big of a suspension, too little of a suspension, or was it just right? Over 125 people have voted this morning. I just posted this an hour ago. And 63% coming out saying that the NBA should have suspended John Morant for a longer period of time. 31% saying just right. Only 6% saying that it was too heavy, too big of a suspension. And Bear County Social Apparel reaches out to me on Twitter and says, the only reason it's not longer is because the suspension the league gave Miles Bridges was just 30 games. And what he did was much worse, which I believe was a domestic abuse case yeah, uh, from yeah. a while back. Uh, Veggie reaches out and says, the league and Adam Silver are a joke. Uh, I did have somebody reach out early today saying that it's, it's actually a pretty heavy-handed suspension in their eyes. I believe it was Matt Lerma who sent that to me because he said, you know what? Being suspended 25 games prevents you from being an all-NBA team, more than likely prevents you from being an all-star. Yeah. But if you take a look at what's going on with John Morant and you take a look at what this all means, you know, his shoes are still being sold. Nike, for a while, took them off the website, but it's back on. They're still going to sell the shoes. They're still going to make money off of John Morant. And John Morant is still going to be one of the faces of the NBA, which is a shame. We were talking about this earlier this week. Who is the star American player after LeBron James retires? Because the American players that are considered to be elite are all old. Steph Curry's in his mid-30s. LeBron James is in his 30s. Kevin Durant's in his 30s. 
The stars right now are foreign players like like Joker, like uh, Giannis, Luka Doncic, Victor Wembanyama coming in, into the league. The NBA needed to have an American face, and John Morant was poised to be that face. John Morant, the number two overall pick a handful of years ago, uh, is a very, very talented point guard, but he's very troubled. Just what's going on in his life right now, he is a troubled man. And the NBA suspending him for just 25 games does him absolutely no favors. It basically says that this behavior is condoned because it is a slap on the wrist. A slap on the wrist means we condone the behavior, but we just can't say much about it. Adam Silver is 100% wrong when it comes to this. Absolutely wrong. Joshua Jimenez comes out to us, no relation, by the way, on YouTube, saying, quote, should have been more games, but are we really surprised the Grizzlies suspended him at the end of the season? Yeah, they suspended him at the end of the season, but that was for the first infraction. It wasn't for the second one. Okay, because when he went into rehab, if you will, when he was going out to that Florida facility, it was to reflect on what he was doing. And he looked Adam Silver, the commissioner of the NBA, in the face and said, I will not do this again. But he did it anyway. Yeah. He did it anyway. So what we know is that John Morant is not a man of his word. What we know is that John Morant is somebody who is circling the drain right now and no one's doing anything to stop it. The rapper Lil Wayne tried reaching out to him the other day and said that John Morant would not reach back to him because Lil Wayne coming out and saying, hey, look, man, I've lived that life before. I've lived the, the gangbanger life before, and it didn't do me any good. It yeah. didn't do me any good until I got out. And that's the thing about John Morant. Uh, John Morant came from a two-parent household. He lived in the suburbs. You know? Yeah, he's not from the hood. No. You know, he wasn't, you know, you know how they say uh, some people look for trouble and for other people, trouble finds them. Yeah. He's looking for trouble. He's actively looking for trouble. And I don't get it. Yeah, you know, this is the way I see it. There is no shame in not growing up like your parents had, had to. Like, if his parents had a harder life, they came from an impoverished community. You know, their, their parents didn't make a lot of money. And they were able to get away from that life and provide a good life for their children in the suburbs, middle class. You didn't have to ever want for nothing. You didn't have to be exposed to that type of lifestyle. There's no shame in that. You know, embrace what you are, embrace who you are, and go out there and be a role model and, and be genuinely um, have some gratitude for, for what you're doing in, in life. Because in a minute, everything can be taken away. And the problem with John Morant is he didn't learn his lesson the first time. He did this a second time. I think they should have suspended him for the whole season. And with the stipulation, if this happens one more time, we're going to kick you out of the league. I don't know if the whole the whole year would have been right. It sends a message. It does send a message, but I don't know if that would have been completely right. He probably would have sued at that point. Uh, but look, here come the defenders coming in on YouTube on our stream right now. Thomas Clark saying 25 games is a quarter of the season. He didn't break any laws, so I'm sure the uh, PA would allow for him uh, uh, would allow this for his for him in this case. Uh, Matthew Lerma saying 25 games is three times worse than the first suspension. Look at it that way. I get it. Okay, I get it. It is a harsher suspension than the first one. The first one was a joke. Okay. The first suspension should have been 25 games. This should have been the first one. The second one should have been half a season. Okay? Going from 8 to 25 does look like, wow, they tripled the suspension. But this is a guy that went up to the commissioner and met him eye to eye, face to face, and said, I'm going to do better. I'm going to make better decisions. And what did he do? It wasn't like years later. This was like a couple of couple of weeks later, a couple of months later. He's back in the news again, there with a gun in a moving car. Did he break any laws? Well, you know, I don't know if you can take guns inside a Denver area strip club, which is what he did. Police decided not to pursue charges on this. You know, I, I don't know what the legalities are in Colorado when it comes to firearms. You can carry firearms here in the state of Texas as long as you have a concealed license to no, do so. No, you don't need a concealed license in Texas anymore. Uh, I mean, you, you can 
You can open carry. I know you that can, you can open carry. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, I don't know if you can do that at a bar. In like, there's certain areas that you oh, cannot man. do it. You can't do it in a bar. You can't go into a hospital. You can't go into a courthouse. There's certain areas. Uh, you can't go to a school. There's certain yeah. areas where you're not allowed to. I know of a business specifically posted on their windows. You know, before you even enter, you know, they have it on the outside right. somewhere. No. No firearms allowed in this establishment. You see that at shopping yeah. malls. Yeah, you know, you have to abide by that. So a lot of people don't still, you know, don't ask, don't tell kind of thing. But, I mean, if they have it posted and you get caught and somebody reports you and a police officer comes in, you can get arrested. You can. And that's the problem right there is that, you know, it's not universal as to where it's going. Not going to re go reflect on the politics involved in that. That's not the debate going on today. The debate is whether or not the NBA did right today. Did Commissioner Adam Silver do the right thing? And I don't believe so. I don't believe so at all. Um, Josh Jimenez reaches out and says, uh, yeah, a rehab center to reflect or rest for the playoffs, right? They get eliminated for the second incident happens. And the Grizzlies suspend him from the facility, and he wouldn't have been there anyway. Um, you know, I the more I look at this, the more I think that the NBA just did it wrong. And John Morant is arguably one of the 10 to 15 best players in the NBA right now. He is super dynamic. I like what he does on the court. Uh, it's odd that the Grizzlies somehow win despite the fact that sometimes he's suspended or he's injured. But that doesn't mean that he's a bad player. He's a, a very dynamic point guard, and he could be the face of this league. I want him to turn his life around. And part of that's going to be about can he distance himself from his friends? Because those that's friends... That's the problem. It's, it's the people he hangs out with. Those friends are not looking out for him. No. I mean, you are the company you keep sometimes. And that's the, that's, that's the issue. Katie Goodman will be joining us pretty soon. She's going to be talking to us about uh, USA versus Mexico, the uh, soccer match last night that erupted into chaos. Uh, we'll, we'll have her on <laughs> as she, uh, uh, as she uh, gets on the stream. Well, as you had eloquently put it, it was a total S show. Yes, it was an S show <laughs> all yesterday. And I'm not, the, I'm not somebody who watches a lot of soccer, though I am getting a, a respect for it. Later on in life, uh, you know, I went to a San Antonio FC match last year. Uh, I was embraced by the Crocketeers and the the pregame festivities. It was oh, yeah, a lot man. of fun. Uh, I had a blast out there. So I'm I'm trying. I'm starting to get more active when it comes to soccer in San Antonio and just because yeah. I would watch the World Cup. You know, I, I like it. I would Cup. do that. Yeah, I go to Twin Peaks. Hang out with my friends. Get drunk at 11 to 10 o'clock in the morning. It, you, you got to. Yeah. It's yeah. the patriotic thing to do. Uh, but we'll be talking to Katie Goodman pretty soon. Uh, we're just reaching out to her to get on our stream. Uh, other news in the NBA right now. Michael Jordan sold his stake in the Charlotte Hornets. He is the last. He was the only African-American who had a majority stake in an NBA franchise. Uh, but that is no more. But I don't blame him. Three billion dollars is what he sold it for. Jeez. Three billion—that's a lot. Like of he zeros. needs more money. Like he needs any more money. That's a lot of zeros there. Three yeah. billion dollars. What would you do with three billion dollars? I mean, you can't even spend it in a lifetime. I'd go to Vegas and try to double it. Uh, <laughs> no, um, that's a great conversation piece. Yeah. Whenever, because my wife will sometimes say whenever there's a, a big jackpot for Powerball or any of these uh, lotteries, uh, you know, to go out there. And I'm thinking to myself, what would we do? Like, what exactly yeah. would we do? And, you know, I've always said that I would try to buy a stake in the Spurs. Okay. A stake in some sort of sports franchise. I probably wouldn't be accepted, right? I probably would not be accepted, but uh, that's what I would like to do. Um, but when you take a look at Michael Jordan – Selling the franchise. I have a question to ask sports fans and ask you, Joe. Yeah. They have the number two overall pick. Would he have sold if he, they had the number one overall pick? If they had Victor Wembanyama going to Charlotte, would Michael Jordan have sold his stake? Because I tell you what, it never would have happened. 
It never would have happened. I don't know, man. That's the thing. You see, the enigma that comes with having the number one overall pick is that your franchise will instantly go up in value overnight. Same thing happened with the Spurs. Right. So, for example, if Charlotte got the number one pick, Jordan was already in negotiations to go ahead and sell. And that instantly rose the state in, in, in the Charlotte Hornets. Today's prices aren't yesterday's prices. Right. So he would have had some thinking to do and say, do I go ahead and still contain and still control the team as being the majority owner and go ahead and let this ride out and see how much I can sell it for maybe in another season or two. Right. Maybe, you know? maybe he would have sold. Maybe he still would maybe, have sold. But he would have sold for a lot more than oh, right a lot now. more. Yes. Think definitely. about Aramark. Think about Aramark. Aramark sold its minority stake, or at least a portion of its minority stake in the San Antonio Spurs. And a week and a half later, the Spurs win the draft lottery. So the guy that bought it from Atlanta yeah, yeah, just saw a huge return of, of uh, a rate of return there instantaneously within a week or so. Um, but man, Michael Jordan is a legend. And it's one of those things where people always ask the question, is he the GOAT? Uh, I go back and forth between Michael Jordan and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I don't think you, you um, can go wrong either way. Heck, uh, Matthew Lerma reaches out and says, Jordan probably could have gotten $5 billion if Wemby was on the team. Jordan still making all that money from the shoes. That movie Air, by the way, that came out. Oh, good movie. Okay. I liked it. It was a good movie, yeah. I liked it a lot. And when I go back and I think about that movie, it is a Ben Affleck, Matt Damon flick. Yeah. But they weren't the best actors in that movie. Oh, no, man. Viola Davis was amazing in that movie she as, stole the show. as Jordan's mom. Yeah. Uh, I think I saw it on Amazon. Uh, yeah, Amazon it was Prime. on Amazon Prime. I saw it on Amazon. I downloaded that movie and I watched it while I was flying from San Antonio to Baltimore, Maryland uh, about two weeks ago to go see my niece graduate. So I was watching that as I was flying in the air, ironically, will be called air. I was watching it on a plane flight. Yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was great. The best actor in that movie was Chris Messina. Chris <laughs> Messina, who played uh, Jordan's agent, yeah. was, was remarkable. My name is Mike Jimenez. That's Joe Garcia. This is the Acquired Taste. Uh, don't forget uh, to subscribe to Locked On Spurs podcast. It is daily content of the silver and black. Now that Wemby's coming to town, the Spurs will draft him in six days. You're going to want to have that daily Spurs fix, right? You're going to, you got to, you got to quench that thirst for Spurs talk. And Jeff Garcia does that on Locked On Spurs podcast. I follow on Spotify. On Spotify. That's how I follow. But you can also follow Jeff Garcia at Jeff G Spurs Zone on Twitter as well. We have a special guest. Yeah, we do. You want me to go ahead and bring her on? Let's go ahead and bring her on. We've got Katie Goodman joining us right now. She's a broadcast analyst for San Antonio FC, the Houston Dash, and UIW Sports. Katie, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. You know, I reached out to you this morning, and you responded back with, wait a minute, you want to talk soccer today? And <laughs> yeah, I know it's a rarity. It's like Messi comes into town and, and everybody's finally on board with it. And I'm cool. And I know you've made space for me to, for me to talk soccer. So I'll give you that. I'll give you there that. There you but go. There's not a ton of people nowadays in general sports in America who just want to talk soccer. But now it's hard to ignore, right? There's just so it, much happening, especially well, last night. Yeah, I, I logged on to ESPN.com. And it was all over the place, the chaos that happened yesterday. And there's two things to talk about when it comes to yesterday's USA-Mexico uh, match uh, that took place over in Las Vegas. Uh, on one aspect of it all, the chaos, the fighting, and everything that went on. Oh, I got the video queued up for you already. I'll oh, go ahead and we'll, play that. We'll bring oh, it up, bring it up. hey, I'm this loving this. The second thing was the fact that U.S. people living to... crap out of Mexico. But as you see what's going on over here, it wasn't just one incident. I mean, there were four, five, six incidences where there was a fight or a near fight about to happen, and then it blew up somewhere around the 68-minute mark. When you see what's going on over here, what do you think? What, what's your takeaway of all of this? You're cutting in and out a little bit, but I'm, I'm guessing you're asking me about the drama right the drama. now. Yeah, and we're asking you about the drama. Yeah. 
Yeah. So for right now, like, I mean, it's expected, like between U.S. and Mexico, there's a long standing um, rivalry going on, understandably so. And, you know, I think a lot of the red cards we saw last night were justified. And I know a lot of people asked even about Weston McKinney's and um, I kind of think so, too, just because. He wasn't part of it. He was in the middle of it. Um, he was talking crap to the bench as well. Yeah, he had to get a new jersey, as you can see there. Um, but I think it was all warranted. Uh, and, you know, for there to be four red cards in a game, that says something. There's something very different under the surface going on. Mexico is frustrated. U.S. was playing fantastic. I think that's some of the best soccer I've seen them play collectively not only how they were building out of the midfield but just the quality stuff there in the attack lots of rotation just coming from different pulse could have had a, a hat trick on his own right and that should say something right and so um they definitely found the rhythm and done a great job also mexico wasn't quite awake i mean you could see it from the beginning they i mean we were running all over them it's almost like they had no tenacity or no like real deep drive i think it's just that, that initial 20 minutes caught them off guard i don't think they were expecting it and so i think what happened was they just um got frustrated in the end you know i think the anger came too late for them and it came at the wrong time and you know there's all kinds of hateful chants out there and then there's the ugly fouls the fouls were yeah. so ugly um so it's like you don't want to exactly resort to that but I do understand things like that popping up because it's a rivalry. That was the so. other story from yesterday was the fact that they had to stop the match early, uh, a few minutes early because of uh, anti-gay chants that were coming from the Mexico side. Uh, it was ugly. I mean, it was ugly what you saw in the field. But to be honest with you, um, I loved every moment. I mean, <laughs> just from the outside looking in, it was the drama of it all. I'm not saying that I want to hear gay chants out, out there, but the drama of yeah. Okay, there was scoring going on. Polisic was on fire, you know, scored two goals. There was one that he almost had. He probably should have had, should have had the hat mm -hmm. trick. And you, you you just watch the drama of what's going on and the anger and the venom that they had towards each other. The American player kissing the patch, the American flag <laughs> patch in front of the Mexican players. I was like, the drama. I loved it all. Did you see the celebration after Pulisic's second goal? It was rock, paper, scissors for Dos Acero. <laughs> and then Weston McKinney was paper and he was he was scissors. It was so good. Oh, my God. I'm like, the burn. <laughs> you know they had that planned. And you know, that's what's the that's the beauty of soccer. There is all this drama. You know, it's there's a storyline. There's so much behind the scenes. Bear Halter wasn't even coaching this one because of the the drama with Gio Reyna like there's so much here and I'm just so glad that you know there's a whole new crowd starting to get a taste of it and and why yeah. it's fun to watch right I mean this has been going on in other leagues for eons and so it's just now getting to the U.S. Uh, and and I think you know the most drama you're going to see always is going to be between the U.S. and U.S. and Mexico you're not going to see this kind of crap show up for us and canada even like yeah it's, it's a knockdown <laughs> drag out match but it's nothing like us and mexico which is the Concacaf finals uh coming up there who, who do you think is favored in that one i'm gonna pull for us you know i think okay. the way we played last night was amazing um just like the movement off the ball that was some next level stuff the confidence was there the rhythm was there i think also there's kind of this underlying confidence when it comes to playing Mexico just because a lot of the guys are still in Liga Mekis. You know, they're not in MLS or they're not, there's not a ton of players abroad. And there's a, we have a lot of players abroad on the U.S. men's national team for the first time in a long time, younger players, but we've got a lot of guys with um, that kind of experience. So I think going into that match, they were already confident. Canada is a different ball game. It's not going to be a walk in the park. It's not going to be the same. Soccer is very pretty. Uh, coming out of there. Um, and so, I mean, I, I'm still, I'm still, I would put my money on the U.S., but it's not going to be like 100%, you know. I'm just pulling for him because I'm a U.S. gal, obviously. There but, you go. Yeah, but, um, you know, I think as far as them being able to win that game, uh, very possible, very possible. But it'll Talking be to, Talking to Katie Goodman, broadcast analyst for San Antonio FC, Houston Dash, UIW Sports. Uh, we have people reaching out to us right now. Uh, uh, 
Gerardo and Chris asking a question about Greg Bearhalter and what are your thoughts of him coming back to coach the U.S. men's national team? Um, you know, he has not had a bad run. I think he's in the 70th percentile for win percentages out of coaches in the United States. He's also in the 70th percentile for win percentages um, as a coach who has coached this national team. He's brought them a long way. He has. And um, so you can't negate that. I think there's other options out there of people who could do the same. Um, it just, you know, some things I'm hearing floating around. But I personally, um, I'm not mad about it. Now, there's all the drama that he had with his wife, right? And so as a woman, um, you don't love that kind of stuff, right? You don't like right. to hear about those things coming to the surface. But it sounded like it was something between them. And I think it's for, you know, it's kind of one of those situations where, like, who's the one forgiving here? Is it us that needs to forgive or is it her? You know, and it sounds like she already did and they kind of moved through it and things seem okay. I don't know, not not um, validating or not condoning any of his behavior from the past, which if those of you listening don't know what I'm talking about, there's a little bit of the reason he was not coaching this game was because he stepped away because there was a lot of drama between him and Gio Reyna. Well, Coach Bearhalter had gone to college with Gio Reyna's dad and Gio Reyna's um, mom is the one who outed Greg Bearhalter to the Federation and then it became a whole ordeal. And um, the reason all of that even went down was because Gio Reyna was being a little brat and okay. Bearhalter had to put him in his place. And so what did he do? He ran and told mom and mom went and made a big deal out of it. And that's why we're in the situation. It literally affected the entire team because her son wanted to be a brat. And if you want to talk about the health of the U.S. national team roster, it's players like that that will take down an entire team. Look last night, Weston McKinney, typically a pretty quiet guy. He's over there kissing the flag at the Mexican bench. I mean, I'm here for it. I love the drama. Yeah. I think it's fun. But that is out of character for him, even in that situation. You know, so it's like you got to be careful with players. I mean, Gio's a game changer. He's a fantastic player, deserves to be on the team just based on his, you know, skill set alone. But at that point, it's hard to make a decision as a coach. I, I kind of sounds like everything, if Bear Halter's coming back, everything's fixed and under the table, you know, it's water under the bridge, because that's what it's going to have to be. But when the rest of your team doesn't see a player, you know, get the repercussions of their actions, that's when you start getting acting out from other players. So um, I'm just hoping that's not the case. Daniel reaches out to us on Facebook asking the question, uh, can we say that USA soccer is back? Um, were we ever there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was going to say there. that, but I didn't want to be rude. Getting, we're getting there. No, no. I think um, what we saw from them in this last World Cup was really good stuff, and it was unlucky. Um, but like I said, this is this is why I'm I'm not mad about the Bear Halter situation. I mean, could there be other people in the mix that could benefit? Yeah. Uh, what was it BJ Callahan last night did a great job, but he also didn't have a ton of time to implement any new strategies or anything like that. So he was pretty much just running off the same thing that Bear Halter had done. He was just stepping into his shoes. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't say they're back, but they're getting there. And they're, there's this is the best performance I've seen from them so far, just as a collective unit. Now the MLS, how big is it that Messi – is coming to Miami. It is next level. And, you know, I've been waiting for somebody to ask me this question, Mike. So thank you <laughs> for asking me this. You know, I think it's the first time that the rest of the sports world in the United States realizes just how big soccer is in the world. I mean, you know, it's so easy to get wrapped up in NFL, NBA. And then the second Messi comes over, his debut game against Club Leon, which isn't even an, an MLS season match. It's just a friendly is going for higher ticket prices than an NBA final for one guy who is still the best in the world at soccer. Somebody told me a month ago about this rumor and I laughed. That is how outrageous it is that he's even here playing in this league right now. So it's a next level thing. It's going to attract better players, um, whether it's to the inner Miami roster or to the MLS roster. Um, so many things had to happen to get uh, messy here. Every club, invested in MLS to get messy on a team that's not even their team. That's how big it is. You know, well, so MLS, Apple, 
Enter Miami, like Adidas, all throwing money at this guy just so we could grow um, as as a nation in soccer because that's what he's done. Well, let me ask you this. Compare this Messi going to Miami to David Beckham going to the LA Galaxy. Is this I bigger? Bigger, a thousand times bigger because Messi is still the best in the world. He just came off a World Cup and he came off a World Cup as one of the higher goal scorers in the World Cup. He wasn't just on the team or the roster. He's not some guy who's on his way out. He's still the best in the world, you know? Hey, and we um, have a question for you, Katie. Yeah. Coming to us via way of Twitter. Well, first as a fan, it says, we need SAFC to get on local TV airwaves. SA needs to hear Katie. She does a great job as an analyst. Oh, thank you guys. All the best. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, well, we're on Bally Southwest and we're on ESPN go. Plus now. So if, um, I mean, I know, I guess it's not local. You still have to get cable or, you know, direct TV stream, stuff like that. But yeah, yeah, I don't know. A lot of things are, are changing with Bally. So who knows? But I appreciate the positive feedback, guys. Yeah, and his question and, uh, was, I, I love important. my SAFC community. I'm so lucky. I'm so yeah. lucky. Seriously. He says the most important question he wants to ask you is Messi or Ronaldo? Messi. Every day, all day, for the rest of my life. Love Messi. I've loved him from day one. For me, it's Ronaldo's attitude. You go on national TV talking crap about your team. Handle it with your coach. Like, you, I don't know. Like, he's always just been a little bit too much of a drama queen, whereas Messi just keeps his head down. He's not flashy. He works hard. He, he demonstrates with his actions and I think I think that just says so much about having a stand-up image for the rest of the world and don't get me wrong Ronaldo he's not bad it's just he's had some things recently and he's been at a couple of clubs and when a couple of clubs are saying the same thing over and over it's like and then and then you go you know if you want to just talk about talent alone he's great out of the air right he's done a lot of good things but he's but Messi has kind of held his trajectory whereas I think Ronaldo's a little bit on his way out. So, yeah. Hey, Mike, let's go ahead and uh, go to the YouTube comments here. Oh, yeah. So, uh, one comment that was uh, sent to us saying uh, by Chris Perez says the reason Mexico doesn't get better is because the Federation is just money grabbing. Uh, the Mexican Americans from over here have to stop going to games and buying jerseys for them to change. Um, yeah, that's a complicated thing. There's a lot there. Um, I think it is a lot about money. I think also the MLS is a bigger attraction than it used to be. Look at Ricardo Pepe. He had the choice to go play for Mexico or for the U.S. and he came to the U.S. Um, and decided to play for U.S. men's national team. And that's because they were on that upward trajectory. So that um, I can't really speak to a ton, but I don't think he's wrong. Um, I think if, if they're your team, though, I don't think not buying jerseys and not going to games here is going to change anything. I think they're already in, in getting into the yellow, orange, red flag zone, right? Um, I I mean, they've lost the last couple matchups with us. Uh, you know, even if you look at the MLS All-Stars game, it was MLS All-Stars, Viga Liga Mekis, MLS won, like – like we're just bringing different talent now here in the U.S. and we're starting. There's starting to be a little bit of a gap. I wouldn't say it's you know next level, but it's there's a gap forming, no doubt. I'm taking a look at prices right now for Messi's uh, first projected first uh, match for Miami. Uh, the cheap seats are going for about nine hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, a decent seat is going for about fifteen hundred. This is Taylor Swift era's tour type pricing right now. For nosebleeds, right? And yeah. normally, to put it in perspective, last year, an Austin FC game, uh, even when they were doing really well, was, I mean, around between, you could find the cheap, cheap ones for like 50 or 60. And then, you know, you could find a couple here and there. I mean, down on the pitch, it was like six or 700, some a little more. But like, this is crazy. <laughs> this, it's a, I'm, I'm just calling it the messy effect. The messy effect. Well, that's that's big league. And I think people are going to come around and notice that, um, you know, we talk about mainstream media when it comes to sports uh, set, tends to fixate on the NFL, fixates on the NBA as well. Uh, but the raw data, the numbers are showing that soccer is probably what number three most followed. Yeah, would, it's it's beating would, out like hockey and a lot of the other ones that it was kind of close competition with. 
Baseball. I was in Jamaica. I was in Jamaica for vacation in December. And, um, you know, I'm being helped out by, at this resort. You know, my wife and I celebrating our 10-year wedding anniversary. We had never done a big trip before other than, like, you know, we went to, like, Disney World one time, right? So this was our big trip. We saved for this. And I'm in Jamaica, and I'm walking around, and this guy is carrying our bags, helping us get to our room. Very nice guy. And he goes, where are you from? And I said, San Antonio. He goes, Texas? I'm like, yeah. And he goes, man, you guys got a good team over there. San Antonio FC is pretty good. And it was so cool that he was talking to me about, yeah, I watched the game the other day. Uh, you know, and and it was it was interesting to see that uh, the following is beyond the U.S. The following is beyond Mexico, that you have people from the Caribbean who were watching these games as well. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, well, Shannon Gomez just called got called up to the Trinidad and Tobago national team. So there's guys on our roster that are MLS caliber. I mean, Sam Adenarin, he's on loan right now from St. Louis City. He was on loan from Seattle Sanders, just got moved around. We've got a couple guys previously from Seattle Sounders, from Columbus Crew. I mean, loaded with MLS experience. And even our bench could be starters on other teams. Like, that's the level that we're looking at with SAFC. And I think that's what makes people so upset that we didn't get the MLS team because we yeah. already have a really strong foundation and Marcina knows his stuff. The a huge key to just maintaining something like that is your ability to recruit. And that's, I think, one of his strong, biggest strong suits, right, is his ability to recruit and to get people to buy in. Because every debut player, except for one, Tulu, except for one, has come in and scored a goal or has come in and done something outrageous, you know, a bicycle kick or a hat trick with two assists. Like he's just good at what he does. And everybody wants to play for SAFC because they are the best. It's where they're able to get their time to shine, especially if you're a guy who's kind of stuck in the middle right now between USL and MLS. It's a great place to shine. But again, that's if you can get into the starting 11, even at SAFC. And SAFC, and they can take it to a lot of MLS teams too. I mean, they had a close call with, Houston Dynamo last season, and I was really hoping that they would get a U.S. Open match with them this season uh, because I think it would have been a closer game. I mean, they had to play Nashville SC, which is the one of the most consistent teams in MLS, so it was not going to go over well. And we were playing their their backup, so and it was evident, right? But um, I mean, these guys ha have brought some next level stuff time and time again, and you know champions they're champions of their league so they're right. the guys that people circle on the sheet now well well and, and speaking of of san Antonio fc you take a look at this weekend or next week rather uh this week they played san uh, san diego loyal it was 2-2 uh it was an interesting matchup I, I actually did watch that it was on hulu I, I i went on to hulu and the espn app showed up and i was like i guess i'm watching this Yay. uh but on top of that they played sacramento next week and sacramento right now is in first place in the western conference uh how big of a battle is that this early in the season it's huge i mean every game counts you know so i think um and they've had a couple of draws this last time they they struggled through uh injuries in the first really early in the season then we, fabian garcia was out in the last game fabian has been next level he was named to team of the week understandably so from the the matchup uh prior to San Diego Loyal just did really, really good stuff. Um, and so, you know, it, it, you could definitely tell that his presence was missed in that last game. There's a little bit of discombobulation in the back line. And that's why you don't ever want to really sub out your back line. But you can't help it if, if there's an injury. And don't get me wrong, the depth is, is there. The guys that were starting did great. But it's different when you're center back who controls the field and the pitch and the distribution of play. Like, the center back is probably – the most cerebral player on the pitch um, next to the goal, the goalkeeper. They're probably right up there up top. And that's because everything starts from them. And if it doesn't start from quality there, it's really hard to make something good uh, in the attack. So, you know, you could see um, that there. But, you know, I think as soon as he gets back in the mix, it'll be fine. Sac Republic, um, it's going to – if there's anything I know about SAFC is they play up. They play up. They're feisty. Um and uh, I think if they can get a healthy squad together, they'll be okay. But they really need a win. It's just been a few too many ties. And they're starting to kind of not get to the middle of the pack. But, you know, for a team that was 
just running the show last season, our expectations are so high. So even when they fall to third or fourth, you're like, what's going on? What's happening? And I know it's still early. We've got until what September, October. Right. I wouldn't start, I wouldn't start getting worried until maybe August, September, if, if they're not handling business. But um, I think either way, it's early on um, when you want to put people away. San Antonio FC is back in San Antonio at Toyota Field on July 1st against Birmingham Legion FC. Joe, before we let Katie go, do you have one more question? Yeah, we have one one more question. I'm going to show it on screen. A uh, viewer here watching us from, from YouTube named by the name of Chris Gonzalez says, what does Katie think of Charlie Davies' count, count, comment saying they hired Greg because if they hired a new coach, they would have to pay the same amount to the women head coach? I don't think it's about money at, at this level, especially with coaching. Um, because Greg has done a, a lot of really good things. Um, he has moved the team forward. Um, it, you know, the, the stories and the numbers there for him. Um, I, I think that, yeah, I, I don't know about that. I would have to look into it. I just don't think that that sounds like something that they would do. Um, and the U S women's national team has had to fight just to like barely get equal pay. So I don't know if that's like where you want your standard to be, you know, like, it's like, I think, um, and even if, even if they did have to like increase pay, um, I think that it wouldn't be a thing. And who knows? Like, I, I didn't look into the details of his contract. I don't know if he came in at the same rate or different or what. Um, but I know he, they've got him through 2026, obviously the world cup. And, um, that I don't think when you're at that level and you're a, the head coach of a national team, that's bigger than just being a coach of any team. That's to the point of where like you're going to do anything you can to continue being a part of it um, because that's about as high as you can go, right? Unless you're maybe going to Premier League, but even then, you know, it depends on what the person values. And I think, you know, Bear Halter, super duper American is all about um, just, you know, being that guy for the U.S. And he's done it yeah. for a long time. So, so, yeah. Before we let you go here, I got to ask you one important question. So I just bought a new vehicle, right? Mike saw her as she's parked there in the driveway. I don't have a name for her. I, I was thinking about... Hey, what what put, vehicle is it? I got a Cadillac SRX. Okay. So I was thinking about naming her Lily, but do you have any suggestions? To name her? Yeah, to name her. Let's see. A caddy. I'm trying to think of a soccer player that gives me, like, Cadillac vibes. <laughs> the women's national team. But it's not – I'm like, nobody gives me Cadillac vibes. I'm like, maybe uh, – I'm like Celine Dion. I'm just kidding. <laughs> like something <laughs> elegant. <laughs> name her Mia for Mia Ham. Mia Ham's pretty okay, classy. No, like She's that. a classy lady. Nice. I like the name. Right, I like Mia? that. Taking it it's back old one. school. That is Katie Goodman. Thank you yes. for being with us today. Uh, it was a great conversation. And the fact that you're super excited about Messi coming to Miami, um, that is big. That is big. And, and it's one of those things where I think it's going to shock a lot of sports fans. But thank you for talking soccer with me today. We'll do it again. Yeah. yeah. Yes, Thanks, let's do Katie. it. Hey, there's going to be a lot to talk about. Trust me. If if there's two soccer rumors coming true in a week and a half, it's only going to get crazier. So, yeah, I'm looking to I'm looking forward to it. And thanks for having me, guys. You take You're care. Awesome. Pleasure. <laughs> you take care. Thanks for coming for coming on, Katie. Yeah. Joe, you know this is something. This is conversation that you probably would not hear on any of the local sports talk stations here in town. Definitely, we're not going to hear it on any of the local. Airwaves, they don't talk soccer because they don't have somebody who's as passionate about soccer as one Katie Goodman. You no, know? no, exactly. Yeah. But the thing about it is this is that I'm I'm trying to get more cultured. I'm an uncultured swine when it comes to soccer. <laughs> I'm trying, okay? I am watching. I've watched World Cup, but that was yeah. an excuse to go get drunk. Uh, but, you know, as far as going to Sanjay FC, my wife and I plan on going. I want to go to the uh, the match on July 1st against Birmingham Legion. Yeah, That's going to be fun. Going. Um but I'm trying to learn more because I need to understand that this is where the people are. And that's the disconnect that I think local radio has is that they don't know where the fans are typically when it comes to that. There is a market for people who want to hear about soccer. And, I, and there's going to be those who don't 
give a damn. But you know what? I don't give a damn about a lot of sports either. Like, yeah. like I glaze over when I hear about ice hockey, Stanley Cup finals. Oh, God. Don't get me wrong. I'll go. I'll go. If, if I had tickets to a Dallas Stars. Are you, buy, yeah. are you buying tickets or you're going to go if somebody gives them to you? To which one? I don't know. Let's say the, the, the Stanley Cup finals. I will never buy tickets for that. Okay. Because I don't. I, I mean, it's exciting. I have fun when I'm there. But uh, the idea of me going to go see an ice hockey match or ice hockey game, whatever the freak they call it, uh, does absolutely nothing for me. But I will say this, though. Going to the San Antonio FC match that I went to last year was so much fun. The That's tail, a lot the of tailgating, fun. Uh, the chance, uh, the, how close you are to the, the actual field itself, the pitch, the pitch itself. Yeah. I was going to say pitch right there, but I didn't want to say it incorrectly, so I <laughs> backtracked when it came to it. Yeah. Uh, but no, it, it's it's a lot of fun, and this year, uh, I'm looking to go to a Rangers game. I, I want to go watch a uh, Texas Rangers game because the Rangers have been playing so well these days. Uh, right now, 42-26 and 26 record. Uh, the Texas Rangers, I basically told myself that I would not be a believer in them unless they were in position somewhere near the all-star weekend which is typically they ain't, they ain't fooled me mike. they ain't fooled me mike well they've lost six out of ten okay they're still a good team they've lost six out of ten but the thing is the houston astros have also lost six out of ten games and right now the rangers are still three and a half games ahead of the astros in the al west uh but the rangers i mean they have local talents from macarthur high school here in san antonio uh so it's pretty exciting to see what's going on with the rangers uh, but if you take a look at the standings right now, you know, if the season was to end right now, uh, you would have both the Rangers and Astros make the postseason. Uh, that would be exciting because I would love to see that matchup there, that ALCS matchup between the Rangers and Astros. That would be pretty, pretty damn cool. Uh, growing up, I was a huge baseball fan. I mean, the Chicago Cubs were my thing because of WGN, right? You grow up, you come home from school, they're, they're out there on the field. You know, Jody Davis as catcher, Sean Dunstan, you know, at uh, at short, and Ryan Sandberg at second base. Leon Durham, the fact that I still remember these names, you either watch the Cubs growing up or you watch the Mets on WWOR. And I got really into it. As time went on, middle school, high school, I became a Texas Rangers fan. And when they were one strike away from winning the World Series against the Cardinals a little bit more than a decade ago, it broke my heart so much that I haven't really returned to baseball very much since then. Like it, it was so painful of a loss for me. And right now I'm trying to get back into it. Another one is like the stuff that goes on at circuit of the Americas, the formula one oh, type of racing. Man. I want to go to that. That's good I want to check that out. They're, they're racing. I believe I know one of the races is going to be the end of September, the early part of October because they have the concert series going on. I know the killers is headlining. One of those shows. Oh out man, there. I love me some killers, man. Really? Yeah. Big fan of the killers. I've seen them in concert five times. They're great. They're man. great. They're great. I one time saw them in concert and only like 400 people were there. Hey, that's an intimate venue right there. Well, it wasn't intimate. Let me tell you what happened. It was March Madness. You know how they have the, con the concerts for oh, March yeah. Madness? Yeah, yeah. So, like when they were here, they had One Republic and Maroon 5. Uh, performing downtown. They had Imagine Dragons because I remember I saw that with the family as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you, you have this big old festival of, of concerts that goes on with March Madness. I went to the one in Dallas. It had to have been about seven or eight years ago. And I'm over there and they had some pretty good acts out there. They had uh, uh, Bruce Springsteen was the night before. He performed with Fun. And then the day that I went it was LL Cool J to open up. Tim McGraw then performed, and then it was going to be the Killers, right? Yeah. But between the sets, this monsoon came by. There was tens of thousands of people there. The rain came in sideways, and I would um, say that it rained man. maybe three or four inches over the course of an hour. People were – I mean, there were no tents. There was no – like, everyone just dispersed. But because this concert was going to be aired during halftime of the March Madness game, it was one of the final four games, they had to perform. And by the time they went back, they went on the uh, stage to perform The Killers. Um, Shot at the Night was the song that they did there. Um, by the time they went out there, there was maybe only three or 400 people there. 
Oh, so, nice. so the photos that I have of watching them perform that concert, because they ended up doing a full on concert was maybe only about seven people deep going to a concert that, that is that big. And it'd be seven people deep all around the stage. I mean, three, 400 people tops were at that concert. It was so great. So great. I mean, we have lots of comments coming on today. Yeah, we've gotten a lot of people who have been fans of Katie. They said they think you should bring her on at least once a month. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I totally agree. She knows her stuff when it comes to it all. And she is so hardworking. You see her do things she for is. UIW, doing things in Houston, San Antonio FC. She's all over the place. Uh, you know, I know that she did some stuff with the Spurs uh, in the past. Um, it's, it's, it's so cool. It and not so only cool. that, but she's just a super nice person as well. She really is. And I know that she uh, auditioned for, uh, was it Rock the Mic that she auditioned for with San Antonio Sports Star a while back? I believe so, yeah. She was one of the finalists out there. She did a fantastic job. Um, I wasn't part of the voting crew. I probably would have voted for her uh, had that been the case. Uh, no, but she does a very good job. She's a very, very hard worker out here. Uh, Chris Gonzalez reaches out to us on YouTube and says, TBS fan or WGN fan in baseball. That's right. It wasn't just the Cubs and the Mets. It was also the the uh, Atlanta Braves. You know, thinking about the Atlanta Braves and going back in time, I don't know what the algorithm is for my TikTok, but I get a lot of Greg Maddox TikToks Maddox. <laughs> whenever I open up my phone. And there's a lot of people out there that are going back and revisiting 25 years later going, how was this guy so good? Greg Maddox was somebody who, he to me, Greatest pitcher of my lifetime. I don't care about Pedro Martinez or Roger Clemens. The greatest pitcher of my lifetime was Greg Maddox. And just the way that he would paint the lines and just, just dazzle people with an 86-mile-per-hour fastball. 86! High schoolers pitch faster than that. But Greg Maddox somehow or another would fool so many different batters out there over all of these years. It's so crazy. Man, you can't mention the Atlanta Braves and not give no love for to Smoltz, man. Come on now. Dude, with Smoltz and Avery and Glavin, I mean, that lineup back there, we're 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 aging ourselves when it comes to that, man. Shh, don't tell no one. <laughs> we're six days removed from the NBA draft. Spurs obviously going to take Victor Wembanyama. We saw a story earlier this week from Jeff Garcia uh, from Locked On Spurs. Again, you can follow him on Twitter at Jeff G Spurs, Ken's 5. Uh, talking about the fact that the Spurs have reached out to Victor Wembanyama, have already met with him for a medical evaluation, and things are a okay, so they're going to go after him. Uh, lots of things going on. Uh, one of the things that uh, Jeff wrote about today was about Victor Wembanyama slipping up when he was talking about the upcoming draft. So he was at this press conference, and it is in French what he's talking about, uh, but he is revealing the fact that he's going to go to San Antonio. Right. It, it, some people might think that that is arrogant or cocky, but he knows that he's the number one overall he pick. He knows. He knows. Right. So he kind of stopped himself in French when he was about to say San Antonio. He was midway through saying our city name when he was like reeling it back in. Like that is not a professional thing to do uh, to say something like that. But uh, I, I find that to be very, very funny. Again, Jeff Garcia from Locked On Spurs. Uh, follow him on Twitter like I do. Subscribe to the Locked On Spurs podcast, because I tell you what, daily content when it comes to your Spurs. And oftentimes I'm on there. Joe, you've been on there before. Oh, yeah. Brandon Medina was on recently. Brandon Medina is going to be doing a fantasy show with us. Uh, lots of local Spurs fans who are on there. James Pledger from San Antonio Sports Star uh, is often on as well. But uh, Pledger, by the way, started his new show this week. Yeah, I got to give him some Sports love. Star. From 6 to 7 p.m. So he's after the Blitz, which ends now at 6. James Pledger is called After Innings. Uh, go check that out. Pledger is one of my best friends of the entire world. Love that man. Just realized today, Joe, that it is Father's Day weekend. Yeah, it is. And I am not expecting much this weekend. I don't think they're going to go all out because I, I'm going to be honest with you. I kind of dropped the ball when it came to Mother's Day this year. I did really good for Christmas. I did really good for uh, my wife's birthday, which are both in December. Uh, but when it came to Mother's Day, I kind of dropped the ball a bit. So I got a feeling 
then I'm going to get some payback. That Sunday is going to be <laughs> just simply a Sunday. But are you expecting anything big this Sunday? Well, no, well, my big thing is I don't really care about the gifts. I like spending time with the family. So I always right. tell my kids, it's just the time I get to spend with everybody because all the kids are getting older and everybody's busy. So we're going to sp- celebrate it a day early because my son has to, we got to drop him off. Full disclosure at Texas Tech. He's an artist. They have an art nice. program. He's going to be graduating next year. So this allows him to live on campus for a week at Texas Tech. And he gets to, uh, I guess, indulge in the art program. And then they have like an art show at the end of the week that we, the parents, get to go and check out. But we have to celebrate on Saturday because Sunday we're going to drive to Lubbock and go drop him off. But I just enjoy the time I get to spend with them, especially my dad. He's getting up there in, in, in years He's really grumpy, man. He's a grumpy bear, but I love him to death. You know, <laughs> he's always saying off the wall stuff. So I get to go and spend time with him. But my kids and my wife have already brought me my Father's Day gift. And I just, you know, they asked me what I want. I said, oh, I, I didn't really don't want anything. I'm, I'm just cool spending time with you guys. Yeah. But they noticed that my barbecue pit's aging a little bit. So they went and got me a new barbecue pit, one that has the smoker on the side, a little bit bigger cool. so I can cook some more stuff. You know, it's still utilitarian. But I love cooking because it gives me time to sneak off in the backyard by myself because nobody likes to be out there in the heat except for me under the tree and do some day drinking. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I'm not looking for much. And even though I'm, I'm, I'm over here like I'm crying that I'm not going to get much for Father's Day. Yeah. Uh, my dad, by the way, is still the strongest man that I know. Uh, he, he uh, you know, I'll be celebrating. I at least wish him a, a happy Father's Day, Dad. Demetrio, happy Father's Day. Happy early Father's Day. Um, but really all I really expect is just some, some, some family time. Yeah. Maybe yeah. go watch a movie, uh, something like that. Uh, we haven't seen the little mermaid yet and I, I heard it was good. I have a special needs kid and I have a, a 10 year old girl who would love to watch it. So I'm probably going to check that out. Speaking of movies next week, let's unveil a movie review. No, typically for those of you who know me and follow me. Uh, you know that I do these nostalgic reviews of movies that I've never seen before. But this time, I'm going to review a movie that I watched for the first time last night that is brand new, which is Flamin' Hot. Oh, okay. The new movie. By Eva Longoria. By Eva Longoria. She is the director of the movie. Yeah. Uh, it's her first time directing a movie. Uh, it is getting pretty decent reviews on uh, Rotten Tomatoes, but it's available on Hulu right now. Watched it last night with my wife. I'm going to give my impressions of the movie on Monday. Give people a chance to watch it this weekend if they haven't already because I think it just dropped uh, the other day. But after that, future reviews will be nostalgic in nature. Jeff Garcia from Locked on Spurs and Kent's 5, if you're listening. Transformers 1986. It's coming this summer. No, don't do it. Don't do it, This summer. This summer, I'm going to review it. Hope everyone has a fantastic Father's Day this weekend. Uh, be safe out there. Day drink, but day drink at home. Joe, thank you so much. It's been a fantastic first week. It has been. We're 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 up in the air, baby. We're up in the air. This is great. Yeah. Right before we end this show, I want to go ahead and let you know, you have a fan, and he's giving you some congratulations there. Oh, Chris uh, Pettis coming out saying you killed it this week, Mike. I agree. I appreciate that, and I Joe did too. Uh, I want to thank everybody for putting up with my voice this week because uh, sinus infections really got me this week. I want to thank Katie Goodman for appearing yeah. this week. Anthony Pittman, uh, uh, Jeff Garcia, Casey Vieira, Casey Vieira. Thank you for being on. We'll have other guests next week as well. And uh, thank you to our sponsor and also to uh, future sponsors because I'm already getting some phone calls and text messages about it. So we'll be hearing from you pretty soon. But uh, for Joe Garcia, Mike Jimenez, this is the acquired taste. Everyone have a fantastic Father's Day weekend. See you guys. Peace.